Welcome to part two of your role transition lesson. In this lesson, we will be focusing on distinguishing the RN role from the LPN or LVN role. Upon completion of this lesson, you should be able to discuss the concept of role transition from practical nurse to registered nurse, describe the various role elements that are inherent in the scope of registered nursing practice, compare and contrast the differences in role responsibilities of practical and registered nurses, Describe the process of professional social socialization from practical nurse to that of registered nurse. Recognize the differences in the educational preparation of the LPN and RN. Compare and contrast the scope of practice for the LPN and the RN. Explain the advantages of obtaining specialty certification in professional nursing practice. First, let's discuss your new role. In deciding to return to school to pursue your ASN degree, you will be faced with new role in nursing. In doing this, you have entered into a huge commitment of time, energy, and financial resources. This may require you to give up certain aspects of your personal life or at the very least put them on hold. This road that you have chosen to travel will be difficult but not insurmountable. Transition is always difficult. At this time, we have one piece of advice. Keep calm and good luck in your new role. In reality, when coming into the ASN program, you had certain ideas of what the RN role were. Your expectations have set the stage for you as you progress through this program. However, the expectations that you have of the RN role often conflict with the reality. This is when the transition becomes really difficult. Professional role socialization. Everyone has many roles in life. There are parents, either mother or father, you may be a son or a daughter, and you also are a student. Each role has certain expectations that are considered appropriate for that role. There are also certain performance parameters that must be met. The nursing role. Nurses, both LPNs and RNs have roles. When transitioning from one role to another requires a change before you can completely assume the new role. As, a L, as an LPN, you have taken on the role characteristics of an LPN. To be successful as an RN, you must be willing to build on what you have learned and the qualities you have as an LPN. The transition will require that you adapt, form, and modify your previous role to beginning to embrace the RN role. Role Conflict as you progress through the program, you will experience role conflict, especially as you discover that the idea that you had of the role of the RN is found to be incompatible with the reality of the RN role. Role conflict leads to stress as you find it difficult to meet the requirements of the RN role. This may cause frustration and insecurity. Take pride in each accomplishment and share those accomplishments with those closest to you. You may play the role of RN while you're in school, but you will begin to realize that you are playing the role that it has now become a part of you, who you are. The role of the registered nurse is multifaceted. The role that most see the is the, as the role of the RN is that of care provider, ensuring the health of patients is priority. This is done through carrying out nursing interventions to achieve the best possible patient outcomes. Nurses also play the role of counselor. Patients and family members rely on nurses to provide guidance and support. Therapeutic communication techniques learned by nurses assist them with providing for patients' psychological needs as well as the physical. Education is a primary responsibility of the RN. This is the reason that one of the roles is that of educator. RNs are also expected to play a leadership role and are often in management roles in healthcare facilities. RNs must also be patient advocates. There are times that the RN is the one who must stand up for the patients and their rights. The RN is a collaborator that works with many different members of the healthcare team and with the patient and family. The RN is often an agent of change and must be willing to take the risks associated with not being satisfied with. It's always been that way. You will find as a new nurse that some of the most powerful learning you will do will be with your mentor or role model. You will find that this person may be official or unofficial. I have learned much with RNs who have been nurses for a long time. You will eventually fulfill the role of mentor yourself. The RN will look for solution or for, for nursing and or patient problems. In doing this, the RN is performing the role of researcher. The most recent role that the RN plays is that of entrepreneur. In this role, the RN often starts a business as a consultant, educator, or advisor. 
Having reviewed many of these roles, the LPN thinks that they do many of these as well. This is true. However, due to the increase in length of educations, RNs are taught to handle more complex patient care problems and have learned more of the leadership skills necessary to, to direct nursing personnel through daily issues. As you think about the differences in LPN and RN, you may be hard pressed to really define the differences. If you do, it is likely that you will mention supervision and IV therapy. But there are other differences in these two roles. The first is in education. In nursing, LPN programs focus on how to, while, while the emphasis of RN education is to teach nurses to ask why. Most LPN programs do not offer college level courses. The prerequisites for the RN program must be taken after graduation. At OTC, the LPNs have a unique situation in that they are required to take college level prerequisites prior to the LPN program. In your book, there is a box that identifies the areas of difference between the LPN and the RN. Review those differences. Other LPN and RN differences include critical thinking. Richard Paul described critical thinking in 1992 as thinking about your thinking while you are thinking in order to make your thinking better. Easy to understand, isn't it? Critical thinking at the RN level is different. LPNs use critical thinking, but RNs use critical thinking in a different manner and expand critical thinking into clinical judgment and clinical reasoning. Other difference in LPNs and RNs. Assessment skills with education vary with education and experience. RNs are legally responsible, according to the State Board of Nursing, Nurse Practice Act, for assessment. The RN uses a more holistic approach to assessment. It isn't just about the physical. You will begin to understand this as you move through the program. It is my opinion that RNs are given the opportunity to use their innate curiosity to delve deeper into the condition of the patient through assessment of all aspects of their lives. Other differences in LPN and RN. The RN is also responsible for initiation of the plan of care. Care plans used to be called, primarily called nursing care plans. Now a more interdisciplinary method is used. However, nurses are still responsible for using the nursing process in planning care. There are also difference in legal responsibilities. RNs get more theory education regarding legal, legality and management in nursing. In addition, Nurse practice defines the legal differences in LPN and RN practices. There are also the previously mentioned different differences in IV therapy. LPNs in the state of Missouri cannot access ports, central lines, PIC lines, give IV push medications, initiate blood transfusions, or participate in any way with IV therapy in neonates. In LPN programs, students are introduced to therapeutic communication. However, the students in LPN programs have very little exposure to other types of communication that they might encounter in the care of the patients. RNs are given an opportunity to be exposed to different types of communication and are given an opportunity to communicate with people experiencing either developmental or behavioral abnormalities. This is often completed in either psychiatric rotations or possibly in pediatric clinical experiences. Patient teaching is another area in which RNs have greater responsibility than, than LPNs. RNs are focused not on what to teach, but how to teach. They also have been taught to assess the patient's readiness to learn. Educational preparation. There are currently three entry levels to registered professional nursing. Those levels are associate degree, baccalaureate degree, and diploma nurse degree. All three of these levels of educational preparation take the same NCLEX exam. The master's degree are specific and prepare students for advanced and autonomous nursing practice. The terminal degree is a DNP or PhD. The DNP is generally more practice based while the PhD is based in research. Education. Nursing programs often seek accreditation. These are currently two accrediting agency that provide accreditation for nursing programs. Your book calls the first NLNAC. This organization is now the Accrediting Commission for Education and Nursing, or ASIN.
This agency accredits all nursing programs from LPN to DNP. The second organization is the Commission on Collegiate Nursing Education, the CCNE, accredits only BSN and above. The American Nurses Credentialing Center, or ANCC, provides credentialing in a nursing specialty. Professional Nursing Organizations America's nurse, American Nurses Association represents the nation's 3.1 million registered nurses. They, they lobby for nursing ideas and, nursing, and proper nursing care. They advance the profession of nursing by fostering high standards of nursing practice, promoting the rights of nurses in the workplace, pro projecting a positive and realistic view of nursing, and participating in lobbying efforts on health care issues that affect nurses and the public. There are many organizations dedicated to specialty practice. Belonging to one or many professional organization provides education and socialization in nursing. The scope of practice. This identifies the responsibilities of nurses depending on their educational preparation and licensure. Scope of practice is defined by individual state nurse practice acts. Individual state boards of nursing, which are located within varying government organizations at the state level, commonly exist to protect the consumers of nursing care by regulating the profession. The National Council of State Boards of Nursing is the unifying body of all of the boards of nursing. The NCSBN is the unifying body for state boards of nursing. ANA's publication, Nursing Scope and Standards of Practice, second edition, addresses the scope of practice and delineates the practice of professional performance standards and measurement criteria for RNs. There are six standards of practice and nine standards of professional performance. Practice standards of practice. The six standards of practice include assessment, diagnosis, outcomes identification, planning, implementation, and evaluation. Scope of practice for the RN. It's defined by the boards of nursing. There are nine standards of professional performance, quality of practice, education, professional practice evaluation, collegiality, collaboration, ethics, research, resource utilization, and leadership. This is according to the American Nurses Association Nursing Scope and Standards of Practice. Which statement indicates the nursing nurse correctly understands the nine standards of professional performance? One of the nine standards is one, collegiality, two, outcomes identification, three, critical thinking, or four, accreditation. The answer is one, collegiality. The nine standards of professional performance are, are quality of practice, education, professional practice evaluation, collegiality, collaboration, ethics, research, resource utilization, and leadership. The six standards of practice which make up the nursing process are assessment, diagnosis, outcomes identification, planning, implementation, and evaluation. A second difference between RNs and LPNs is the orientation to the use of critical thinking skills. The accreditation process is intended to demonstrate to the public that a nursing program meets national standards, requirements, and criteria. Multi-State Licensure, or the Nurse Compact Act. The Nurse Licensure Compact was developed by the National Council of State Boards of Nursing. This allows nurses in compact states to work with other compact states without obtaining a license in that state. The nurse licensed in one compact state and practicing in another must adhere to the laws of that compact state and this requires that the nurse stay abreast of any changes to multi-state licensure. All of the states in blue are part of the nurse licensure compact state. The ones in green are those with pending legislation and the states in yellow are pending implementation. Scope of practice. Licensed practical nursing. Practical, practice of practical nursing is considered directed in that the LPN, LVN functions under the direction of an RN, physician, or other advanced health care provider. LPNs and LVNs are prepared to provide care in settings where patients are experiencing common health problems and they focus on meeting basic needs. The LPN, LVN is also considered the technical nurse. Registered nursing. There are several definitions. Florence Nightingale believed the role of nurse is to put the patient in the best condition possible for healing to take place. The RN serves the client in both autonomous and collaborative roles, participates in the plan of care, possesses advanced assessment skills, utilizes critical thinking, and is aware of his or her legal and professional responsibilities. The 
of practice. The primary ADN roles are provider of care, manager of care, and member of the profession. The American Nursing Association agenda for the future is to include leadership and planning, change in delivery systems, legislation and regulation and policy and becoming more involved, developing a professional nursing culture, recruitment and retention of, of professional nurses, identifying the economic value of registered nurses, increasing and enhancing the work environment, making it easier to maintain nurses in the nursing profession, public relations and communication regarding nursing, solidifying and helping with the education and progressing of education for nurses, and enhancing diversity in the nursing profession, bringing more male and more people of other cultures into nursing profession. The future of nursing leading change and advancing health. In 2001, the Institutes of Medicine completed a survey and identified four key elements for the future of nursing. Nurses should practice to the full extent of their education and training. Nurses should achieve higher levels of education and training through an improved education system that promotes seamless academic progression. Nurses should be full partners with physicians and other healthcare professionals in redesigning healthcare in the United States. And effective workforce planning and policy making require better data collection and information infrastructure to advance nursing. This concludes this the lesson two of your role transition unit.